streams in the desert. Right now it just feels cool in the shade. <laughs> and nice with some coffee. And then today we have a nice breeze. It seems to cool things off quite a bit. Concerning the work of my hands, command you me. Isaiah 45, 11. Our Lord spoke in this tone when he said, Father, I will. Joshua used it when, in the supreme moment of triumph, he lifted up his spear toward the setting sun and cried, Son, st stand thou still. Elijah used it when he shut the heavens for three years and six months and again opened them. Luther used it when, kneeling by the dying Melanchthon, Melanc hmm. Melanchthon, he forbade death to take his prey. It is a marvelous relationship into which God bids us enter. We are familiar with words like those which follow in this paragraph, I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. But that God should invite us to command him, this is a strange change in relationship, which is altogether startling. What a difference there is between this attitude and the hesitating, halting, unbelieving prayers to which we are accused or accustomed to, and which we, by their perpetual repetition, lose the edge and point. How often during his earthly life did Jesus put men into a position to command him? When entering Jericho, he stood still and said to the blind beggars, What will you that I shall do unto you? It was as though he said, I'm yours to command. Can we ever forget how he yielded to the Syrophoenician woman the key to his resources and told her to help herself, even as she would? What mortal minds can realize the full significance of the position to which our God lovingly raises his little children? He seems to say, all my resources are at your command. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. You know, I love the, the beauty of that, and I love the explanation that goes with it the <laughs> challenges i have with it sometimes are i think sometimes there are people that take that a little too far and others that take it not far enough god at work in jesus gave and anointed him with the Holy Spirit that he should be able to see his father in heaven and only do those things that he saw his father doing. I think when we are told that we can do those things and ask for those things that we are put into the mindset of looking to Jesus and asking whether or not we would do his will or whether we want to exercise our own knowledge and just command and say our will. Now, in certain circumstances, I think like Joshua and those, perhaps they were in right relationship to understand that God had already said that they were going to conquer. So then they said, hey, I, I need more light. Be still. And so they participated in what was already God's will. And I think that's where the difference is, you know, that you can go about and think that you have all the power in heaven and all the keys of the kingdom and command this and do that and require this and require that and forgive this and forgive that but you know if you go out there and do it without God you're just making yourself out to be a God but if you do it with the Lord then you give glory to the Lord and he receives the credit as he is God and you are not in my mind I am always reminded that there's a balance to devotionals and evotionals. There's a balance to what I see in life and to what I hear from the Lord. And that there's always that place where I need to be reminded that God is the one who's in control and we're not. When we put that controlling factor in its proper place, meaning God speaking to us, then when circumstances come up, we can look back to God and ask him, well, okay, Lord, you brought me here now, and I committed to you this day. Now that I'm here in this place, what is it you want me to do? 
And then we can have the assurity that whatsoever it is that he's told us to do, we can go forward with confidence and boldness. Because it's God directing. And it's not our own ideas. So for me, I'm mindful of the thought that it's easy to run off and do my own thing. And maybe God will back me up. But you know, after he does, he's going to come back to me and explain what I did wrong. I hope that you have great confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ and you put no confidence in your own flesh. If you keep that in mind, I don't think you'll ever go wrong. Not too much.